This video talks about the different types of cerebral herniation. Now typically there are three different types of cerebral herniation. There is the subfalcin herniation, there is the tonsillar herniation, and there is the uncle herniation. So I'll be talking about each one of them um, at a time. So let's talk about the subfalcin herniation. So this is where the subfalcin herniation is seen. Now what happens is the fox cerebri what is the fox cerebrae? It's a fissure which comes down between the, between the cerebral hemispheres like that. So this is the fox cerebrae. The fissure, fissure between the two cerebral hemispheres. So it comes down like so. And right here we have the cingulate gyrus. Cingulate gyrus is not supposed to come out like this the green area that I have drawn and when it does come out like this due to some pressure due to some outward pressure onto the brain like that we have our cingulate gyrus herniating and this is going to be called our subfalcine herniation and the reason it's called subfalcine herniation is because it's underneath the fox cerebri okay so that's why subfalcine herniation and which gyrus is uh, herniating and that the name of the gyrus is cingulate gyrus and that's another reason why when this gyrus herniates it's called cingulate herniation so this herniation has two names um, subfalcin herniation or cingulate herniation now this kind of herniation does not have a very profound effect uh, on the brain stem because the artery that it's affected due to cingulate gyrus herniation is going to be anterior cerebral artery. Now, if our anterior cerebral artery is affected, then what kind of effects are we going to see in the patient? We are going to see the patient having gait problem. And why the patient is going to have gait problem? And the reason for that is because obviously cingulate gyrus is part of the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is associated with um, with action of the lower limbs. So when our lower limbs are not working properly, we're going to have gait problem. The patient can also go into coma. Now, all the effects of anterior cerebral artery, I will talk about it in a separate video, but these are the two main ones that we can, uh, we can associate with, that if anterior cerebral artery is going to be affected, we are going to have gait problem. And that is our subfalcin herniation or our cingulate herniation. Now let's move on to uncle herniation. So now what exactly is uncus? Uncus is a part of the temporal lobe, okay? And the uncus can herniate through the tentorium cerebelli. Now do keep in mind that this is the temporal lobe herniation and this is going to be the frontal lobe herniation. Now there is a small structure right here which is right here called the tentorium cerebelli. What exactly is tentorium cerebelli? Tentorium cerebelli is a structure that separates the cerebral hemisphere and the cerebellum. To avoid any confusion, I drew my cerebellum up to here, so now it's very accurate in terms of uh, proximity. So this is my cerebral hemisphere and, the, and this is my cere cerebellum and my temporal lobe or my uncas can herniate from here through this structure called the tentorium cerebelli, which is supposed to uh, separate the two structures. But when uncle herniation happens, it, uh, it passes through the tentorium cerebelli. Now, what are some of the effects of uncle herniation, or what do we see in a patient with uncle herniation? Now, since this uncas is pressing onto our midbrain, okay, what do we have in our midbrain? We have uh, cranial nerves 3 and 4. So often we're going to see cranial nerve 3 palsy. Our oculomotor nerve is going to be um, damaged. Also, we're going to see some of the effects of the post-ganglionic paras parasympathetic fibers that is also going to be affected. Now, what will happen if we have oculomotor nerve palsy? What kind of effect are we going to see in our patient. So I drew the muscles of the eye just to 
make this point clear what's going to happen if we have oculomotor nerve palsy. So which of the muscles of the eye are supplied by the oculomotor nerve? Well, pretty much all of them, except two, and that's the lateral rectus, which is supplied by cranial nerve 6, and superior oblique, which is supplied by cranial nerve 4. Everything else, superior rectus, inferior oblique, inferior rectus, medial rectus is going to be gone if we don't have oculomotor nerve. By the way, this is the nasal side, and this is the temporal side. Okay, so if we only have our lateral rectus and superior oblique intact, what's going to happen? Don't you think this muscle is going to overpower, over muscle everything else? So it's going to move our eyes out, upwards. And superior oblique is also going to be overpowered and it's going to move our eye down. So we are going to have an eye which is down and out. So our pupil is going to be right here. We're going to have an eye which is down and out if we have oculomotor nerve palsy. Now that's not the only thing that is being affected in the eye. The other thing that's going to be affected is going to be the pupil is going to be dilated. And the reason for that is because the parasympathetic ganglion, the post-ganglionic parasympathetic fibers are being affected and you will not be able to constrict your pupil as a result. So those are the effects of uncle herniation onto the midbrain. Now there are also other effects too. For example, duret hemorrhages. So what exactly is duret hemorrhage? Duret hemorrhage is hemorrhage onto the midbrain and pons area right here due to the uncle herniation. So that is also something we're going to see in uncle herniation. Now, is that all about the uncle herniation effects? No, there is one more, and that is infarction of the occipital lobe. Our occipital lobe is going to be infarcted because of uncle herniation. And we will, uh, what do we have in our occipital lobe? We have the visual field. We're already having so much problem with the visual field that um, that is, and the reason for that is because of our PCA being compressed due to the uncle herniation. So the temporal, the occipital lobe infarction is due to compression of the PCA, which is also going to be caused due to uncle herniation. Last but not the least is our tonsillar herniation, the last type of herniation. And that's when the cerebellar tonsils is going to herniate through the foramen magnum. Okay, it's going to herniate through the foramen magnum. And when these tonsils herniate, they affect the cardiorespiratory centers of our medulla. So we can even die from it if our cardiorespiratory uh, centers are compressed so much that it, it can be life-threatening. So those are all the different herniations.